Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank Malarsic and in this video, we're going to be doing a brief stock analysis on Duke Energy, ticker symbol DUK. And uh, right now we're just going to, first of all, look at a quick little fact sheet that Duke Energy has put out. Now, first of all, just point out it is from the end of 2019 so it's almost two years old so it could be a bit outdated but it should still give us um, a general overview of what they do so they're a fortune 500 company fortune 150 company headquartered in charlotte north carolina and they're one of america's largest energy holding companies um, so at least at the end of 2019 their market cap was around 66 billion dollars with a revenue of around 25 billion and assets around 160 billion so uh they have electric utilities and infrastructure that's one portion of their business and um you know the states that they serve are north carolina south carolina florida indiana ohio and kentucky so a lot of that region you know indiana ohio kentucky is right around where i'm from and where i live so i'm pretty familiar with duke i guess there's a definitely a lot of duke jobs um in the area and um, especially for you know people studying engineering in college uh, a lot of People are looking for co-ops at Duke, so that's you know always a good sign to see that they always have a lot of jobs available. Um, but basically, they have around 7.8 million customers in these you know states, these six states basically. And then for their gas utilities and infrastructure business, um, their states are North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Ohio, and Kentucky. And in that case, they have about 1.6 million customers. And then they also have this renewables business, um, which operates in 19 states and sells power to electric utilities, uh, cooperatives, municipalities, and corporations. And at least at the end of 2019, they had about 126 solar energy facilities, 22 wind sites, 11 fuel cell locations, and a battery storage project. So that's just a brief overview of you know what they kind of do. Uh, we also want to look at the you know some of the financials and. Um, the first quarter or sorry second quarter of 2021 so these are the second quarter results from 2021 basically which are the three months ended june 30th 2021 um and uh right off the bat with total revenues of around 5.75 billion dollars and that was up a little bit from last year of 5.4 billion dollars so definitely good to see there <clears throat> and operating income of 1.1 one billion dollars compared to 1.1 last year so actually a tad bit lower this year but you know that's pretty much flat i would say so can't make much of a judgment there obviously we would like to see uh some increases there um but when we look at uh you know total net income they did have some uh weird expenses here um in 2020 uh at least in the second quarter and i'm not exactly sure what that was that was probably something related to this pandemic they had about 1.8 billion dollar expense that's just under other um so i'm not exactly sure what that was but basically that caused them to have you know an 890 million dollar loss last year or sorry 800 million dollar loss last year down here um which compared to this year's 750 uh, million dollar you know profit or income essentially that is pretty good but uh definitely not a super interesting point of comparison just because of the um, anomaly that was last year that probably caused them to have that um, expense so I'll definitely be looking forward to the next few quarters to see how they compare um, and into next year this uh, company is not one that I own um, if you guys have not figured that out yet but it's not one that I own um, and also going to take a look at the balance sheet here the uh, current assets around nine billion dollars and current liabilities around uh where was it here uh 16 billion dollars so um that usually is a big red flag with a lot of companies i would say for most companies if their you know uh current liabilities like that are a lot larger than their current assets but i think with utility companies because they are sort of a regulated monopoly um they sort of have a little bit more uh leverage there and oftentimes those companies take on a bit more debt and are just a bit more leveraged in general and just because of the nature of their business and that steady cash flow that they um, receive that you know sort of helps them with that and allows them to do that without having any problems so total assets are around 165 billion dollars and it doesn't look like they list their actual total liabilities here but um, their total current liabilities around 16 billion dollars and then they have about 57 billion in long-term debt um, so those combined 
are around you know 73 billion dollars 73 and a half billion dollars then they also have around 42 billion dollars in other non-current liabilities um, such as deferred income taxes and uh, you know retirement obligations stuff like that um, and those are around 42 billion dollars so adding that to the 73 gives us around 115 billion dollars and uh, probably closer to around 116 once we round those in um, so around 116 billion dollars in total liabilities compared to 165 in total assets which gives the total equity of around 49 billion which is basically the difference between those and the one other thing that i did want to point out is the shares outstanding here um, and basically at the end of the second quarter of 2021 they had around 769 million shares outstanding and uh, actually at the end of the second quarter 2020 they had around 735 million shares outstanding so actually a little bit of an increase there which uh, for current investors is generally not the best thing to see um, that may have been you know sort of related to the pandemic I'm really not sure but uh, if we wanted to you know get a better understanding of how you know the board of directors and the you know management at that company is handling things then we would definitely want to look a little bit further out on that on those shares outstanding uh, just to get a little bit of a better picture of that so now we're actually looking at Duke Energy's shares outstanding over time, uh, basically from 2005 to now. And we can see generally it's been uh, since around 2012, it's been pretty flat and a little bit of a steady increase, but nothing too dramatic. Um, I'm not really sure what happened back here. I know this uh, big spike is in 2012, around September, from June to September. And I know that they had a one for three reverse stock split in 2012. Um, but that should have made the number of shares go down and um, I believe that this you know chart is accounting for that reverse stock split because um, I was reading an article that said they had around 1.3 billion shares before this split um, and this is saying they have around 0.44 billion shares um, so that would mean that you know those uh, that 0.44 is about one-third of those 1.3 billion shares um, which makes sense for that one to three stock split. Uh, basically how that works is um, they reduce the number of shares. Uh, so in that case, you know, the price of the stock will go up. Um, so basically, I'm not really sure what happened here. Um, I would definitely like to do some more research into it um, as to why that happened, but I'm sure it's probably um, not a big deal. It's probably explainable by something. Um, and uh, if we look at some other utility companies like Southern Company, we can see they are generally increasing their shares outstanding over time. And same with Next Era Energy. Um, this is their charts. So I think it's safe to say that it's not really that big of a deal to see the shares outstanding in Duke uh, increase over time if we're at least comfortable with the utility sector as a whole, um, because it looks like that's just something that's generally how the utility sector works a little bit more, maybe similar to the real estate sector, because they often um, will finance some of new acquisitions through, uh, you know, share offerings as well. So uh, maybe that's just something that we have to be uh, comfortable with as an investor if we want to invest in utilities companies. So we also want to take a look at the dividends here. And right now the current yield is around 3.93%, almost reaching that 4% mark, payout ratio around 75%, which is, you know, not too bad, um, but it does show that they're probably not gonna be able to grow that dividend uh, super quickly in the future, which is uh, evident from this five-year dividend growth rate of around 3.1%. And you know, it is a utility company, so you, um, it's, you know, expected that they're probably not gonna grow uh, the company as quickly. Uh, they're a pretty big company. Um, but for me, I would really like to see that dividend growth rate a little bit higher. I think uh, for the utility company that I do own in Southern Company, their yield is around 4% as well. And I think their dividend growth rate is a little bit higher, around 4 or 5%. Um, so I do like that a little bit better in Southern Company. And the dividend growth for Duke is, uh, seeking alpha says 10 years. I saw in another source it was 14 years. So I think it's somewhere in that 10 to 15 year range. Um, so they still have, you know, a lot of room to continue growing that dividend. I know they do have around 95 years of consecutive pay, consecutively paying a dividend, just not necessarily increasing it. So it is good to see that, that long history of at least paying a dividend. Um, and looking, you know, at the PE ratio valuation right here, uh, you can see the PE ratio back in 2010 was about nine or 10. Um, and then it was, you know, in this range of 10 to 15 for a lot of these years. 
and then it was up around uh, 17 to 20. Um, and then their earnings basically in 2020 dropped pretty drastically. Uh, so that's why we saw this big spike here and they've started to increase again. So right now it's at 26.27. Um, and right now their earnings uh, are about $3.82. But if we can see these earnings, you know, go back up to this $4.50 or $5 range, um, then that would, at this current price at least, would put the PE ratio closer to around 20. So that's something we want to keep in mind going forward over the next few months um, and quarters to see if they're able to increase their EPS to similar levels uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, because that would definitely um, decrease that PE ratio and make their valuation look a lot better. And looking at the utility sector as a whole, the average for the whole sector is around 43, but just for their regulated utility sector, which Duke Energy is definitely a part of, it's around 21. So if Duke Energy is able to, you know, uh, increase those earnings like we were just talking about, then I think they would be pretty much in line with the whole sector um, and maybe a, at a little bit of a better price. Uh, but right now it looks like they are a little bit, you know, overvalued compared to the regulated utilities industry. Um, and also taking a look just for a second at the chart here. Um, right now, they're kind of looks like they're in a bit of a channel here. And, uh, you know, right now they're sort of towards the bottom of that channel. So that could be a little bit of a good buying opportunity. But they're definitely uh, right now around $100 a share, which if we look a little bit further out, that's pretty much at their pre-pandemic high. Um, they're high, you know, before the pandemic was right around $103 per share. So that's pretty much... Uh, where they were before the pandemic um, and they de have definitely gotten over that to around $108 in the past um, in August it looks like but for the most part I think uh, you know like I said before it's a utility so it's a slow growing company you're not going to expect a ton of growth um, and I think for me I want to be looking forward to the next few months of earnings to see how they're recovering from the pandemic and continuing to grow moving forward uh, before I would make an investment in Duke Energy, um, I think that Duke is definitely a great company. Um, they have a ton of business, especially in the area I live in. So it, it's easy for me to see that, I guess. But I think in general right now, they are just a bit overvalued for me um, as to what I'm looking for from Duke Energy uh, compared to their history, compared to, you know, the problems they've faced in the past or at least the pandemic I would just like to see a little bit more assurance um, of their you know growth into the future and how they're recovering before I would make a buy so definitely let me know, know if you guys do own Duke and you know around what average cost uh, you got in I definitely would probably have been more eager to buy the stock if it was in the 80s or low 90s um, so let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching to the end of the video I will see you in the next one